much. Welcome to Build. I am your host, Ricky Camilleri. Just in time for Halloween comes Netflix's new ghost story series, The Haunting of Hill House, starring our next guest, Mikhail Hausman. It is very scary. Let's take a look at the trailer. Now I want you two to get good rest. What if I have a bad dream? Well, I'm sure we can handle any dream you have. What if I dream that you sent us away? into the dark and me get hurt. Really hurt. And what if I'm so sad and scared of the dark out there that I put poison in me for years and years until my blood turns into poison and my heart breaks right in half and I can't feel anything happy. <laughs> I can't stand it anymore, and I, I have to die. In time on a silver table, it's my jaw wired shut. <laughs> Would you wake us up from a dream like that? We're not like any other family. We're different. Because of where we grew up. Hill House. Your mother, she was not crazy. Neither was your sister, neither is your brother, neither are you. You don't have to worry now, sweetie. That really bad dream. Of course I'd wait. Put your hands together for Mikhail Hausman. Hey. Thank you so much. What a trailer. It's, a, it's yeah. That's it, a really good trailer. Thank you so much. Uh, it's scary when, those, when an eight-year-old asks us questions, right? I imagine, you know, uh, we had uh, Elizabeth Reeser here last week who was uh, who's in the show as well. And talking to her about the person who made this show with you guys, I imagine this was kind of a labor of love for all of you involved, especially knowing that, your director is doing 10 episode, episodes, has written them, is going to be editing them, is kind of doing everything that Which everybody... Which is an insane uh, undertaking, of course. Um, but it also it was one of the things that really attracted me to become part of the project because I, I love when a director is able to really give a project his signature. And in TV, uh, that is not always the case. It happens more often when you're doing like a limited series, like uh, four or five or six hours of a show that, that a director is able to do it. And now I understand why. <laughs> because doing 10 hours is, is massive. But he, he pulled it off. It was pretty spectacular. I imagine that that helps gather the troops consistently on the set as well, that you guys are kind of all there. I mean, if there's anything that's going to make an actor, I think, help a director, it's like, okay, he well, he's gonna he's doing a lot more than us, so let's yeah. give him the best that we can here. <laughs> true, I can't complain. Look at what he's doing. Um, um, very true. It, it's also very inspiring to be um, to be. A, you know, it was very inspiring to work around Mike Flanagan, the the director, because he somehow even though the story is so massive and um, it's really a slow burn and uh, 10 hours in two different timelines and even within the timelines, it's pretty complicated. He somehow always knew exactly where we were or where our character came from. And I seriously, I didn't really know how he did that. But maybe that's just because it all came from his head. So it's, that helps. It's not really two different timelines. It's like it's multiple timelines because he's True. flipping back. And I mean, there is the obvious one of the different actors when when you know your your character is a child and, and then yeah, their the, children yeah, exactly. But then within the adults, when you're playing an adult, you're flipping a few years back and forth consistently and months own. and weeks. Yeah, uh, 
don't worry, it's not very complicated. No, it's not complicated. Uh, once as you a watch viewer. it, it's like you just hopefully yeah. um, as you'll a viewer, get it. Viewer, it's not complicated. But I imagine as an actor, because you're block shooting it's this so most likely. Uh, yeah, of course we were uh, block shooting it a couple episodes at a time. Yeah. So not all ten at a time, thank God, but like three or four. Um, and and you know, I would I would just write timelines in the back of my scripts. Yeah, and then so that I could quickly go back to to that and and look at the diagram and think, oh yeah, that's where I came from. Or well, I think especially your character, right? Because even in those timelines shifts as an adult, you have someone who's not a success to someone who is a success, and someone who isn't dealing with a certain amount of family drama too is now being confronted with. Yes. So, so he's a yes. kind of a different person in a lot of ways. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, it, uh, my character Stephen Crane is the oldest of five siblings. The kids that all spent only a few weeks in Hill House, but that really left, that really scarred them for the rest of their lives. Um, he was the oldest though. He was already like a, like 14 years old. Uh, there's an actor, Paxton Singleton, who's playing my younger version, or I'm playing his older version. That's probably more appropriate <laughs> because he's a phenomenal actor. Um, but he was actually, being the oldest of the kids, he didn't experience the, the, all the crazy stuff that his younger siblings experienced. Um, but what uh, Stephen, my character, did do is later in life bank on the, uh, you know, on, on what happened in that house and the, uh, uh, and and by by writing a story about it, and that really, I mean, that really set off his family. They they really dislike him for doing that. So from the opening of the of our show, my character is somebody who's basically with his back against the wall and his siblings hate him, but now he finally has what he always wanted, like a successful writing career. He's writing stories that he doesn't really believe in anyway, so I thought it was a great place to start. Yeah, it's a great character. Each of the yes. siblings are very well developed characters. I think that some of the difference that you yeah. get with a horror, with like ten hours of a horror uh, story versus the hour and a half that you normally yeah, get time. with. While there's great horror movies coming out right now, you don't get characters this fully developed. You don't have this much time yeah. to see the backstory of all these characters. Yeah, and that's something I really enjoyed about the show. I, I, you know, what I just explained, I always really liked about my character. There's a big reveal. Um, around like towards the the uh, seventh eighth episode of our show um, of, of of a major flaw of Stephen something that he really should have done differently, <laughs> and I just thought you know that makes him so human. You're very good at playing kind of secretly flawed men. I think men who present a certain. Well, I said not meant what to be say funny. about me. I'd nothing. <laughs> um, but I, I, I think you, of a number of your characters, and they're 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 men. I think of like the invitation, or even like I mentioned Tremadio back there. Men who present a certain way as if they are in control, but that control is masking something that is either a flaw or something much more sinister right. than that. Yeah, yeah. But I find those characters interesting. Yeah. I mean, why do you why do you think that you find that interesting or find? It's because it's so human. It's so right? Yeah. There's so much going on in all of us all the time. And um, uh, I love being able to show both colors in a character. Now, I am personally, there, you know, that's like, it has nothing to do with me. Sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking. But. Uh, but it's moments, it's, you get great moments where your characters turn, I think. Yeah, yeah. well, yes. And that, that's, that's very, that, uh, the payoff is great then, yeah. you know? Um, also, of course, for example, you mentioned Treme, but that was also like when a character is like goes down, then there's the turn, and they eventually can crawl back out, out of the gutter. And um, uh, I hope that for Steven, there's some kind of resolve too. The the cool thing is that often with those characters, like even with uh, Steven, even though I think he's so flawed, I do understand him. I sympathize for him. So I guess uh, somehow I always find, I find that in them, you know, that I, I see that they're, at, th at their core, they're not bad people. I haven't gotten to the moment in the series where the turn is that you kind of just referenced around six or seven, you said. Yes. But I find even though... Oh, that's not really, that, 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 it, it gets even worse around that time. So oh. turn comes very late. 
But I, I, find, <laughs> I find that I, I empathize with him. He's a man who has a story to tell, wants to tell that story. The family doesn't want him to, but he sees it as his, own, his only option for, for his career. So Thank he kind of has to do it. Thank you. I, I think he's presented, um, as much as you can sort of agree with the family, you can absolutely see where he's coming from, especially, I think, in today's society, which is just an overshare society mm -hmm. consistently. It's expected that you're going to overshare. Right, play. right. Yeah. And he fell for it. Um, you know, in my mind, he, he used to write um, historical novels, and nobody was buying them. And he, you know, these kids grew up in this house that was notorious. And um, it's kind of like, uh, I mean, obviously, The Haunting of Hill House is based and inspired on a Shirley Jackson novel from the 1950s, uh, even though it's, it's a very loose adaptation. Uh, the novel, like the two film adaptations, is, correct me if I'm wrong, there's a haunted house, there's a lore about it, and a group of people kind of go in. For like a sleeping exper yes. a sleep experiment. Yeah, exactly. So we have the house, but in our case, we, we use, we use uh, uh, some of the text from the original book. Um, we use a lot of names, and, and, and we make a lot of references. But in our story, it's not, a, it's not about a sleep project or anything. It's a family that moves in just to flip the house. And they just have to get out after a couple of weeks because, because of all the crazy stuff that's happening there. And then we pick it up 25 years later, and we sort of discover how this has infected, um, affected all these, these, these kids and, and scarred them for the rest of their lives. And something happens, brings them back together, and eventually brings them back to, to Hill House. Um, I was going to say something earlier, but I forgot. Okay. Oh, that's okay. We'll back to that. uh, did you go back and read the Shirley Jackson book and try to do some of that research, even though the, the yes. show is definitely jumping off into a, in a kind of different direction? Yeah, I did. Because also, in our, in our story, we, we, we made my character, Stephen Crane, the author of the book. The Haunting of Hill House, and that actual book might look slightly different. Uh, I mean, will look different from Shirley Jackson's, but um, we borrowed some some of her her text for it. And like, uh, for example, in the opening of the first episode, uh, it starts with um, like literally the first four lines of the book. Um, I remember what I wanted to say earlier. Actually, um, you know, have you ever heard about this documentary, uh, My Amityville Horror? Oh, I know the movie. I know the movie, There's but movie I don't, I don't know the. I don't, I don't know if it's I've good. seen the documentary. Uh, documentary is very intense too, and um, um, it's about a man who, as a kid, grew up in a house that was notorious for being haunted, and um, it's very interesting. It's, it deals with how it really affected his, the, the rest of his life. Um, it, it's it's you know it's, it was very useful for me to 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 watch that documentary as you know. To get a, bit, a little, little bit of an understanding, what that would do to you psychologically, you know, as a kid growing up in a house that everybody's saying that's haunt, that it's haunted. Does that just kind of become a tool in your in the toolbox for your character, in the sense that like you watch something like that and you can pick up a mannerism, or you can pick up a way that a guy takes his time answering a question, or doesn't take his time, or jumps at certain moments, and use that for how you build your character? It could, but it didn't really because. I think he, he uh, the man that's followed in, in, in that show is, is, is very different. Uh, but I, I mean, I could have, yeah. But, <laughs> but I, would, I focused more on, on a different side of, of, of my character and, and more on like the, the wannabe writer, you know? So uh, very aware of, of, of the way he comes across and how he reads and when he, when he reads from his own work and stuff like that. And that's all like this part of this facade of like the outside of this guy where everything seems to be like he's got everything under control. And um, you can just gotta watch a couple episodes. And he's you also see never that gonna be down. he's never gonna be happy with what he writes or what he's successful with, you know? No, no, never. No. Yeah. Unless he stops writing haunted house stories. But even then, you know, like, would he be happy with writing historical fiction if it wasn't selling? Would he be happy with writing a novel if it wasn't, you no. know? No, he's, he's, he, I think he wants to be a success. You know, I think that's very important for him. And um, so he's got, he's, got, he's got something to learn there. <laughs> are you a horror yeah. movie fan? Going into Halloween, are you going to be watching some horror movies? Um, well, I've almost finished watching this season. 
so that was that was very exciting. Um, I will probably, I mean, my favorite horror movie of all times is probably The Shining, yeah. and um, and our show also really, uh, I was very happy with that. It, it, it pays tribute in some ways, I think, to to The Shining, particularly when when you think of those long, uh, uh, steady cam shots following the little kid, and and we have endless examples of that same sort of feel in our show. Um, mm -hmm. But I usually get get really scared when I <laughs> when I watch horror. Do you really? Yeah. What? Which is weird because you'd think that I know that it's fake. Do you get scared when you're watching this? No, because I know what's coming. But I got scared when I was reading it for the first time. But that's so interesting because so much of what happens in this in regards to scares, uh, I mean, from what I watched, are in are in the scenes that you're not necessarily in. All of the True. scary stuff is like sort of informing the drama of what you and Elizabeth Reeser and the other actors, yeah, actors True. are doing. But most of the scares come with uh, the child actors. Yeah, so that that's that doesn't help me because then I, I I was not part of that shoot then, and then I watch it and then I forget that it was because I read it at some point, but then I forget it again and uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's um, but. Our show is not really, it's not the kind of show that, that constantly throws jump scares at you. There are a couple, um, but it's mostly a slow burn and it's very psychological, I'd say, you know. And we're, for the longest of time, we're thinking, it's not completely clear whether all these ghosts or all these things that seem to happen are only in the minds of our characters or actually happening. They're also, and this is just reiterating what you said, they're creepy rather than jump scares. It's rare that there's like a, a quick punch in and a scream sound on some random thing. It's more like it's lurking in the background and it slowly reveals itself or vaguely reveals itself. Exactly, and we're afraid that it's going to come closer and closer. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, maybe that's worse. <laughs> because it's this constant tension, right? As opposed to like, oh. Is this your second horror project? Um, well, I, I guess if you mentioned The Invitation earlier, it's I a movie. I love that movie. movie. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's also on Netflix, actually. It's, it, uh, if you have not seen The Invitation, go watch The Invitation. Uh, watch yeah. The Haunting of Hill House as well. But yeah, but The, the Haunting is not going to come out until Friday. Yeah. So you have time. Tonight or tomorrow night. <laughs> the Invitation is one of those Appreciate that. great uh, movies that I feel like when you see it, you feel like it's yours almost because no one was really talking about it. And then it's slowly built into this thing where more people were talking about it. And it turned sure. into something that was like, have you seen The Invitation? You've got to see this movie. And everybody sure. I knew was like sort of recommending it to each yeah, other. Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. It, it didn't become a, a, big, um, a big thing when it came out. But I'm, I'm still surprised to see how many people actually find the movie and watch it. Um, but, but that was sort of very psychological as well, and then at the end it sort of turns badly. One of the great um, endings, you know, one of the great punchlines of, of a movie. I oh, think. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, but um, I think uh, horror needs a great ending, right? And so in The Invitation, so I loved hard. it. Um, it's uh, The Lanterns, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and in, um, in, in, in The Haunting, I really appreciate that Mike is trying, our, our writer, director, was trying to do that at the end of every episode, have something, you know. Um, first, first one that comes to mind is late in the season, though, and it breaks my heart. It's when um, uh, my mother, played by Carla Guccino, but only she's, she's our, our, our mom from, you know, when, when, when we're all younger, and she stands at the bottom of the stairs and... The kids go up, and Dad goes up, and, and he turns around, and he asks, are you coming? And, and she's saying something, no, no, you go on without me. And he answers, never. And, um, well, you have to see the show to understand that it's very heavy and very emotional. Um, That's also a punchline to something that we see in a very early episode as well. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, it's the kind of show you can go, you can make. Watch and then watch again, and still find new. Is this a, forgive me for not knowing this? Is this a limited series, or is this something that could potentially there could be a second season of? Yeah, it could be both. It could be because it's very, it very feels like it's uh, it ends um, at the end of season one, and so uh, I guess we're we're just gonna wait and see how the audience responds to it, and then we're gonna figure out whether it it there's gonna be 
a second season and if that's going to be like a sequel or that it it could also be like more of a an anthology which also excites me because I um I, I you know I love that too like have a season that's a, a different horror story that you, that you and the cast are all involved in yeah I, I would like that and and but it, it's also cool that uh you know, Mike Flanagan got to do ten more hours of writing and directing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. But he's a he's he's got such a well of ideas. Um, it was very uh, we very much. I mean, our shoot it took about eight months um, because he also needed time in between episodes to prep, of course. So um, I can't believe they let him do that. It's just wild to me. Yeah, yeah. They did, <laughs> I, I, which is amazing. Uh, really, a testament to a, absolutely. You know, and I that mean, that also goes to. For like when we're talking about season two, it feels like um, Netflix and Paramount and Amblin are really giving us the freedom to sort of explore that, you know. And, and it, you know, it's not like set in stone what that is going to look like. That's cool. Yeah. Let's get some questions from our audience. Who's a question? Right here. Hey. Um, hi. Uh, how do you normally start on working a new, uh, creating new characters? Do you have any routine? What inspires you? Um. Well, I try to f I try to find it's always different, right? And really depends on the project. Um, for uh, for Stephen, it was also it was important to, of course, read all the scripts, read the book by Shirley Jackson, watch the other movies, um, just as an inspiration and just to, to know what's out there. Um, really work in my case, um, work on a dialect. Uh, which is like a more like an east east coast like Massachusetts sound, and uh, but not necessarily Bostonian or anything more. No, not uh, not yeah. not too specific. No, I'm east. I'm Massachusetts. I'm Western Mass, so east coast. No, I don't know. So that so work this. on that sound. Yeah, and um, exactly like me. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All the deep insecurities and everything. It was great. Yeah, great performance. <laughs> and. Um, uh, but it's, it's it's different every time. Sometimes I, I always like it. For example, when a character has like a certain skill that I don't really have, that gives me a first way into a character. Um, and and but but Stephen didn't really have that. <laughs> uh, next question. Hi, how are you? Thanks for being here, and congrats on the series. Thanks for being here. Um, as an actor myself, I'm always curious to see what other actors' biggest challenges are on a certain set or a project. So what was your biggest challenge working on this set or in this genre? Um, well, in the genre, I found it very, pretty cha challenging to, to be scared all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes even scared of something that wasn't there, even though we did mostly like practical and, and all the ghosts and most of them are, are real. But then in CGI, they would take out eyes or, you know, or, or en enlarge mouths or stuff like that, right? So you would have to imagine that. I find that very challenging, especially when you have like these long, slow shots and you keep staring and you keep being scared. Like, that's a challenge. <laughs> Um, but on the show in general, there is one episode that I, I'm very proud of. It's episode six, where we basically, in the first episodes, we introduce each one, each, each sibling. And, um, and then in episode six, all the storylines sort of converge. And um, to amplify that feeling, uh, we decided, or the director decided, that he wanted to shoot it as if it's one take. Now, in reality, the show uh, is f like four long takes. And then at the very end, it, it cuts really quickly. But that's like two minutes. Um, but so there were takes that were almost 24 minutes. Wow. And, and it's with the entire ensemble. Um, sometimes even the camera turns and then comes back. And then all of a sudden, I'm replaced by my younger version. And so were my, my colleagues. So, so sometimes even with, with the, working with the kids, uh, that were, you know, backstage and then came on and then jumped out and we, we were back on again. It was really, we rehearsed it like a play. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I found it maybe the most exciting uh, thing I've ever done for TV because it's, you know, it, it brought a whole new uh, level of excitement in it, you know, to it. 
That's and just stunning, very scary too. stunning to me that he was able to choreograph something like that and put something like that, that together in the midst of directing all of these episodes. I also didn't think that, like, I mean, he, he was talking about that plan from the beginning and I loved it. I, again, love that we have like a certain look for the show and then we can just break it. In episode six, we have a different feel. But I thought he's never going to be able to do that. <laughs> so because at the last minute, they're going to say, you know what, we don't have time for this. And just just shoot it more in a more conventional way. Which is totally normal. Like, that happens all the time on everything. I also think that a big part of the audience is never even going to notice that it's one take. Yeah. But hopefully they do feel something. I mean, they hopefully at least feel something in the performances. Because everybody's on edge. Um, because if you're doing a 24-minute take, that was the longest out of the four. Um, you know, once you're 12 minutes in or so, you don't want to mess it up. Because that means a reset of an hour and the, the camera operator needs, you know, needs a break for his back too, because it's long. So, and then you, you know, you're running out of time, you know you don't really have it, you did three takes that day, you know you only have time for one more take. Don't mess it up. Did I this, love that. Did it? Because that's the opposite of what I usually am used to, right? You can yeah. always mess it up and go again. Did it take as long to shoot that episode as it did to shoot another, any other episode in the normal way that you would shoot it? No, we shot it in four days. Wow. But we prepped it. For That's what weeks. I mean, yeah. So, like, the amount of time total. No, I think it would t this would took longer oh. than a normal episode, yeah. yeah. Because also, I don't know, I don't want to get too technical no, please and nerdy, do. but please. I like this kind of stuff a lot. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, They're not here. So you Go know, ahead. You know, when, <laughs> when, you're, when, you, when you do, like, um, you know, when you swing around the camera, um, we didn't just want to turn on the light. And, and, and then and not adjust anymore. Because then all of a sudden the show would look very differently. Every, everything looks very, as you can see in the trailer, hopefully it looks very styled and it looks amazing. You lose and a certain amount of impressionism when you, when you do that. Yes. Like things become less evocative. On, exactly. So uh, Mike was... It's for realism, sorry, but it doesn't make sense for horror. Yeah, and, and, and it would, would be a departure from the rest of the show if all of a sudden you go for that more realistic sort of look. Um, so Mike, uh, the director, and uh, Michael Fimignari, his, his DP, weren't willing to do that. So d they came up with a plan, and basically a light plan, that, that was so elaborate. So there was somebody sitting behind this gigantic mixer, you know, wow. turning lights up, turning them down, and so subtly that as an actor, I didn't even, I, didn't, I, I could never notice it. But it happened constantly. So the camera swings around. This one goes off. That one goes on. That one goes on. And they all, all those lights had to either be practical so that you could see them, like a, like a bed, lamp, bed lamp or something like that. Um, or they had to, to be hidden. And they have to go up and down as the camera's in the midst of swinging so by the, by yes. the time we reach. But very subtly, right? Right. Now, they can fix it in post if it, if it came in too, if they, you know, went up too fast or you can, you can sort of, but still. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the amount of time that you have to change that and the choreography yeah. that goes into that goes so mapping that out. That goes so much that goes into that. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. I can't wait to see that episode. Thank you. Uh, last question. Hi. Uh, so hey. I have a question regarding Orphan Black. Yes. Um, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so at the end of the series, I'm just wondering in your mind where you picture Cal in regards to Kira and Sarah. Oh my God. <laughs> Do you picture Cal? <laughs> no, I haven't really pictured Cal in a while. Um, didn't he go to Iceland? With Kira. With Kira, but didn't she come back? I thought so. Well, Sarah goes to join them at one point, but. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I, I haven't thought about that for such a long time. Uh, I wouldn't really know. I think you know, you know more <laughs> than me. <laughs> if I'm being honest. That's got to be one of the... It was a great show to work on, though, by the way. Uh, talking about a technical feat, you know. Um, how they, Maslani's perform yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, Tachana's performance is amazing, but also how they technically pulled that off. Um, that was blew my mind, even being there and standing next to it and, and seeing her do it. Um, yeah. That's got to be one of the 
strange parts of being an actor when you're in stuff like Orphan Black and Game of Thrones, and I think even like The Haunting of Hill House, which will develop these fan bases that really wonder what happens with the characters before and after. And primarily your job is on set in the moment and remaining in the moment. And yeah. what probably excites you is the things that you got to do yeah. within those moments. But people mm. want to ask you all the time, like, hey, what yeah. happened to your character? And, and sometimes I let go a little bit. I don't, I don't you know, I don't really... I, yeah, I, I move on, and I and new stories that are in my head, and so I, you know, <laughs> yeah, you caught me by surprise. Uh, well, congratulations on the show. I love it. It's fantastic. I can't wait for this episode that we were just talking about. That's all one camera. Episode six. Uh, and it, Friday night. They're all online, so you can just, you know, but don't go straight to six. Don't do that. Yeah, no, start watch. from the beginning. The it's Haunting of Hill hours. House is on Netflix this Friday. And before that, go watch The Invitation as well, because he's great in that, and it's a great movie. Mikhail Hausman, everybody, let's hear it. Thank you.